Well, first up today, here's a voicemail from one of our listeners named Sam. I was wondering about in the book of Revelation where the devil is bound for a thousand years. In the all-millennial view, we don't take that literally. And I was just wanting your opinion because I know you have an all-millennial view. I was also wondering if your resource for the book of Revelation is from an all-millennial view. And uh, I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, just uh, come before your throne of grace with boldness. We thank you for the access that you've granted us through the blood of your Son. I thank you for Pastor Aid, Bill Meyer, uh, Lord, and I, I thank you for the ministry that is going out from there in California, Lord, touching people all the way over on the East Coast, uh, in Tennessee, many, many places abroad. And I'm so thankful for your grace and mercy and your faith, faithful servants that you have in Pastor Adriel and Bill Meyer to rightly divide your word. They are dear brothers, and I'm so grateful for them. I ask you to continue to bless their ministry, Lord, and continue to raise up harvesters for the field. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Sam, what an encouragement, brother. Thank you so much for um, your prayers uh, for this ministry, and, uh, and just pray that you know we continue to bless you as well in, in the work that we do. Uh, so you have a question about eschatology, the end times, and in particular what my view is of the millennium. Uh, now th- this this uh, this comes from Revelation chapter twenty, where John has this vision. Uh, Revelation chapter twenty, beginning in verse one, I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the bottomless pit, and a great chain. And he sees the dragon, that serpent, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. That's the millennium, and threw him into the pit and shut it and sealed it over him so that he might not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be released for a little while. Now, there are really three three uh, primary views on this. There is the premillennial view. So millennium, premillennium, premillennial view, which is that Christ is returning, the second coming, happens prior to the millennium prior to the binding of Satan. And so uh, the millennium is something in the future. And the idea is that Jesus is going to come back, establish his kingdom on earth, and then reign on earth for a thousand years, and then Satan is going to be released. That's the pre-millennial view. There's also the post-millennial view, which which sees the millennium uh, as happening during this present age, a a period in the post-millennial view would be a, a sort of a golden age um, for humanity and for the church on earth. And we're, we're ushering in, if you will, the second coming of Jesus Christ. And he comes back uh, to a world that is, in one sense, been Christianized. The amillennial view is is distinct from both of those views, although I think there are some sim- similarities with the um, post-millennial view. But, but it's distinct in that, that we, we believe, I believe, that Jesus Christ is presently reigning right now from heaven, that his kingdom is primarily manifested in the the life of the church here on earth. It's It really is uh, the new creation, if you will, and so it's been inaugurated. The kingdom is here. Uh, it spreads through the ministry of word and sacrament. It's going to be consummated. It's going to come in a, in a fuller way when Jesus returns to earth, but that would mean that, yes, Satan is currently bound. Now, the, the, the reason he's bound in Revelation chapter 20 is the, so that he might not deceive the nations any longer. Again, remember that, that Revelation is is a, a book full of symbolic images uh, and even symbolic numbers. And the number 666, for example, or the seven spirits of God earlier in the book of Revelation. It's important for us to understand this as we are approaching the book of Revelation. But specifically, that, that purpose clause that's given, the binding of Satan has to do with him not being able to deceive the nations any longer. And ever since the coming of Christ, the gospel has been spreading not just among the Jews, but also among the Gentiles. I mean, that's one of the things that we see in the book of Acts is that the nations that were once in darkness have now received the light of Christ. And this is precisely what Jesus said he came to do during his earthly ministry is bind Satan. You see this in the gospels in Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, for example, or in Mark chapter 3, verse 27, he's come to bind the strong man so that he might plunder his house. And right now, through the preaching of the Holy Gospel, 
The kingdom of Satan, the evil one, is being plundered as the light of Christ spreads throughout the whole world. Remember that the the author of the book of Revelation is John as well. And in the Gospel of John, in John chapter 12, Jesus says something very interesting. John chapter 12, verse 31 Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. They're referring to the nations flocking to Christ. Satan being uh, definitively judged, cast out, if you will. I think that's parallel to the binding of Satan in Revelation chapter 20. Why? For what purpose? So that all people might be drawn to Jesus. It doesn't mean that Satan isn't still active in the world today. It just means that the nations are no longer in darkness, that Christ through his ministry has bound the strong man, the evil one, and now the gospel is spreading. And we praise God for that, and that should give us confidence as we preach the gospel, as we share the gospel with others. This is what God calls us to do uh, as Christ continues to build his church on earth. Thank you so much mm-hmm. for that for that question. Let me just say, uh, I know, <laughs> I mean, it's such an important question. You you also asked about the, the resource that we have um, on the book of Revelation, which I hope that you get a hold of. It's a 10-week Bible study on the book of Revelation. And here's what I'll say. I'm currently preaching through the book of Revelation in, in our church. And one of the things I've been struck by is e- even with all of the differences with regard to eschatology and views of the end time, really at the heart of the book of Revelation, um, the, the focus on the care that Christ has for his suffering, persecuted church and what it looks like for us as the people of God to be comforted and to persevere <clears throat> in the faith is is something that, that really all the views, I mean, we, we can all look at the book of Revelation and say, that's the main point. That's the focus. And that's really what you're going to get um, from this study is, is a real practical, you know, Christ speaking to us as his church on earth, experiencing tribulation and suffering and, and thinking through the, the word of comfort that Jesus has for us in the midst of that. And I, and I think that's something that, you know, whether someone is post-millennial or, or uh, amillennial or premillennial, you can see that in the book of Revelation. It really should be the main focus of our, our studies and, and it certainly is of this study.